Current events, part eight. I don't think I'll give this one a title, but uh, the verse that you see up before you is pretty self-explanatory as to what this little chat and Bible lesson is going to be about. You know, it's getting harder and harder to bite one's tongue in these days with so much perversity going on. Not only going on, but people acting as if they are righteous in doing so. And people acting as if the righteous are wrong for saying anything about the perversity. I'm going to weigh in now on this uh, Duck Dynasty fiasco, which has been garnering the media's attention over the past couple of days. Of course, it's all to draw attention away from what's really going on in Washington. But the media just can't get enough of this. Oh, they don't pay too much attention when Christians are thrown in jail for praying at a school. They don't make a big deal out of it whenever a teacher tells their students to stomp on a piece of paper with Jesus Christ or Christ written on it. They don't give a whole lot of coverage to the Christians in other nations which are being murdered and drug out of their beds in the middle of the night to be killed by extremists. But hey, let a Christian man say something, especially something from the Bible, the word of God about gays and lesbians, and the avalanche falls. The media attention is focused on him. What did he say? Did he say something anti-gay? Look at this news clip from Yahoo. And I want you to pay strict attention to this. And look how Yahoo tried to make this into a race issue. You will notice the highlighted word here in the red triangle. You will note it says, Phil Robertson is not backing down from his racially charged remarks. Really? Were they racial? Are, are gays and lesbians now some other race of people? I mean, calling gays and lesbians another race is, you know, in my book, kind of racist itself, I would think. I mean, I realize there are people of many cultures and many races involved with this lifestyle, but calling them a separate race, what are they, aliens from another planet or something? No, of course not. But Yahoo, under the careful direction of their propagandist ministers, threw the word racial in there just to add a little bit more gas to the fire. Because they know the power and implication of the invocation of such a word. In other words, they recognize the power of a label. Somebody will see racial and they'll go, oh, Racism! No! But if one clicks into this story, the word racial is not used inside, but instead the word controversial is used. How about that? Since when is quoting from the Bible controversial? I mean, surely for saying the written words. I mean, I realize and I know that people teach and believe differently about the Bible and that there is controversy amongst the beliefs, I suppose, but... When is just simply quoting a verse from the Bible controversial? Well, in fact, since the progressive 
bleeding heart left wing secular communist militants took over and the New Agers since they began taking over the media and the educational system. That's that's since when. You see, if anything is said against a minority of any kind, it is seen as being oppressive. Even if what was said is absolutely the truth. That, my friends, is what we call ass-kissing. Excuse my French. And pandering to perversion. And to certain ethnic groups. Ethnic. Just because of their race and just because of certain events that happened in history. Oh, you see, the white man could never be forgiven for the injustices that he has done. Well, how about all the crime that's been done by these other races? You know, let's get real here. These other races, and I'm not a racist person, but... I'm going to point out the obvious and the truthful. I'm going to speak the truth. The ratio of crime done by other races than white people is something like the ratio of 10 to 1. Look at the little knockout game going on across America now and in parts of Europe. Look at all these things. You know, I'm sorry if this offends some people, but facts and statistics do not lie. Per capita, African Americans or African Europeans or Mexican Americans do more crime than Caucasian white people. And that is not a lie. That is not made up. Yet, they are less than half the population combined. Now, I don't mince words, and I don't speak politically correct lies, and I don't back down from saying things which are the truth. And anyone can verify what I have just said by going and looking at crime statistics nationwide or worldwide. Okay? So... If you want to go and see it, go look for yourself. Don't take my word for it. But I don't want to get off subject here. What this man, Phil Robertson, said has nothing whatsoever to do with race. But Yahoo, and probably Google too, since Yahoo and Google are all owned by Mr. George Soros and his group of cronies, tried to imply racism. But what this man said had nothing to do with race other than God's word concerns all races, and God alone is worthy and fit to judge. And you know, I really get tired of the media propagandist telling simpletons of the world what to think and how to feel about things. I mean, my God, doesn't anyone have the ability to think for themselves anymore? For crying out loud. Do you have to be told how to be or or how to feel? Do you have to be told when to be angry? Are you duped by what the media is telling you? If you're believing them, you are. That is to say... 98% of the media. And judging by what is going on in the world and in our nation, one would certainly think that people do not have the ability to think for themselves. I mean, really, just just take a cross-section of America and look what's going on. (coughs) excuse me, you've got people camping out, and they camped out over Thanksgiving for days to get the latest iPad or the latest BlackBerry or whatever the hell it was, 
the latest piece of technology, which by next Thanksgiving will be outdated and replaced with a new version? Or how about the people stampeding over each other or fist fighting or destroying the store doors and property over a few Christmas gifts? Hey, that's really what the Christmas spirit is about, eh? I mean, that's what the day is about. To go out and beat the hell out of someone or stampede over someone, push them down that you might climb so that you can buy up a freaking gift, which in a year or two will be outdated technology that you'll toss in the trash can and to pay high dollar for it. Congratulations, brainiacs. No, that's not what the day is about. That is self-centered, narcissistic to the nth degree, and selfish, and has very little to do with the meaning of Christmas and brotherly love. And look at how the people flocked into the uh, show and sat down in front of their TV to watch Miley Cyrus rub her crotch twerking over some uh, unknown singer to me as they mimicked a sex sex act on live TV. Boy, that was brave, wasn't it? Wasn't that pushing the envelope? bending the rubber band. I'll bet you daddy is proud of his little whore. Oh, I I mean his little girl. I'll bet Madonna's parents are just as proud in Britney Spears and all of the parents of those who push the envelope farther and farther and farther to offend anything moral and to offend Christian values. Of course, what do you expect from people like Madonna who came out hanging on a cross at one of her shows? Anyway, anyone who cannot see what is going on in the world, you know, there's no need for me to waste time telling them about it and pointing out the blatantly obvious. If they can't see the speeding Amtrak about to hit them, then let them be knocked a few hundred yards. I speak metaphorically. Maybe it will knock some sense into their little empty noggins. Let us go now and read some scripture. And let us read what the media labels as racial and controversial and hate speech. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You know, you could read Deuteronomy and Leviticus and see that God has called these things perversion. But we're going to go to the New Testament, and we're just going to read uh, some verses here from a couple of places. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and Romans chapter 1. But before we begin the Bible study portion of this, let us go before our Father's throne, that is, those of you who still care about our Father and aren't uh, shooting a bird at him, metaphorically speaking, and saying, in your face, God. So let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven... Glorious, almighty, and omnipotent. We come before you this day, Father, seeking wisdom and guidance and understanding from your word. We ask you, Father, to lead us and guide us in the truth. We ask you, Father, for the ability to teach these things, to help those who cannot see to be able to see, as Christ did when he gave sight to the blind. We ask that your wisdom be upon us, Father, that your guidance lead us in the scripture. We seek your face and counsel, Father, and we ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach. 
Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1. And these will be the words of Paul. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? In other words, if you've got a problem with your brother, will you go to law with the unjust instead of to a righteous person? And sadly, most of the uh, people involved with law now, and I don't mean police officers or um, people like that. I mean corrupt, fat-gutted lawyers and uh, judges. In other words, will you choose to go to uh, before them rather than before the saints? In other words, it would be better for you to go to a Christian mediation. You, you'll get a more fair shake than you will from the law. Verse 2. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Did you hear that? When shall the saints judge the world? With Christ. They're not going to judge the world of their own. They're going to judge with Christ. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? In other words, speaking to the saints here. Verse 3, know you not that we shall judge angels? Oh, imagine that. Well, what are we talking about here that we're going to be judging angels? Well, you got your fallen angels which are going to be returning. We'll be judging them for sure and exposing them. But also during the millennium, when everyone is in their angelic body, and Christ and his apostles and the election are teaching them, they will be judging them. This doesn't mean to judge them to hell or to uh, whether they live or die. It means in judgment of their ways. To continue with the verse, how much more are things that pertain to this life? In other words, if you're fit to judge angels, how much more are you fit to pertain to judge the things of this life, so long as you follow the word of God. In other words, when someone quotes the Bible about a perverse lifestyle, they're not judging anyone. They're not using hate speech. They're repeating what God said. God has judged it an abomination. Verse 4. If ye then have judgments of things pertaining unto this life, set them to judge who were least esteemed in the church. Well, why would we want to do that? Because the ones that are highest esteemed in the church are the ones that Jesus Christ referred to as hypocrites. Remember all the times Jesus Christ said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Why do you think he said that? The word means play actors. They're not teaching you the truth. And they're certainly not speaking out against things like Miley Cyrus twerking all over this uh, whoever he was. And they're certainly not coming to the defense of Phil Robertson of the Duck Dynasty. At least a lot of them aren't. Verse 5. I speak to your shame, if it is so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one shall be able to judge between his brethren. In other words, what Paul is saying here is, I'm saying this to your shame. If there's not a wise man among you who is able to judge between his brethren, that they have to go and take it before the unjust. Verse 6. But brother goeth to law with brother and that before the unbelievers. Do you understand that? In other words, the brother sues or takes his brother to court, and he does it before the unbelievers, those who, those who uh, practice law not of God, but of the precedence of man. Oh, man is so wise in his precedence. 
I mean, just look at all the wonderful things that have been accomplished. Look at the great shape the country's in because of man's policies and presidents. Verse 7. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? In other words, why not just let it go? If you're going to go before the unbelievers, why are you why are you going to do this? Why don't you just suffer yourselves to be defrauded? You're going to be if you go before the unbelievers. <clears throat> Verse 8. Nay, which means no, for those of you who don't understand Old English, ye do wrong and defraud, and that's your brethren. Now these, coming up here, are the verses that Phil from Duck Dynasty quoted from the Word of God. Verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, which means gay and lesbian, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, which means the same thing. In other words, those who share their bodies with their own sex, abusers of themselves with mankind, men with men. Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. This is one reason why you want to be sober. You don't want to be a thief. You don't want to be a reviler. You don't want to be an extortioner. You know, that's what a lot of our politicians are, extortioners. Writing little laws to extort more and more money from you, Mr. and Mrs. American taxpayer. And calling it a policy for equality and freedom. Oh, we're doing such wonders. You know, radio talk show host that used to be on Fox, Alan Combs, wrote a book. And I believe it was called Thank God America Saved the Liberals or uh, Thank God America Was Saved by the Liberals or Something along those lines. You know, the audacity uh, of even saying that. The liberals have ruined this country. And, and they shouldn't be called liberals anyway. Liberal is an outdated term because the liberals now are not liberals of old. The liberals which are now are progressives. They're secularists. They're socialists. They're borderline communists, and if they had their way, they would be communist. Verse 11. And such were some of you. In other words, you were thieves, you were covetous, you were drunkards, you were revilers, extortioners. You were adulterers or abusers of yourself with mankind or idolaters. But ye are washed. In other words, you're cleansed. But ye are sanctified. In other words, you're made whole by the blood of Christ. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, of our God. That is Yahweh. Verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. In other words, Paul stayed within the law. Do you know what the law was? He's referring to the Old Testament law, except for the blood statutes and ordinances. You see, that's what sin is. It's the transgression of the law, the law of God. That's what the word illegal means. Mr. Bloomberg of New York giving licenses to 
the illegal aliens. You know, why do we even have a word illegal if we're just going to ignore it? Illegal means to transgress the law. That means if you're here illegally, you are breaking the law. But that's not going to stop them from getting driver's licenses, and that's not going to stop them from collecting Social Security, and it sure as hell not going to stop them from voting. Look at some of the videos I have on my page about how people are bragging how they went and voted several times. What was done about it? Even there's video proof with them showing that they did it. You want me to tell you what was done? A big fat goose egg. Zero was done about it. Justice standeth afar off. Their feet run to do evil. Do you recognize those verses? Verse 13. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. You know what meats for the belly are? That's what you feed your fat stomach with. And the belly for the meats, that's your flesh body. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And of course, we're, we're talking about fleshly fornication here in a, in a sense. But moreover, we're talking about the fornication that's going to come with Mystery Babylon in the end times. And we're talking about these perverse lifestyles. They are an abomination. That is fornication. For a man to lie with a man... It is called sodomy, but it can also be called fornication because it is unnatural. Verse 14. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Who's he going to raise? Us. Well, who is us? Well, gee, I don't know. Do you think it's people that don't believe in God or people that believe in God? Now, let's let's weigh that very carefully. I know that takes a lot of brain power to figure that one out. Boo! Verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? You ever heard of the many-membered body of Christ? Shall I then take members of Christ and make them into members of an harlot? God forbid. Do you know what it is to play the harlot? Do you know why Mystery Babylon, who is not a real woman, is called the harlot in the book of Revelation? <clears throat> the mother of abominations of the earth, in other words, the biggest harlotry that's ever gone on, because she's going to fall into the bed with the wrong husband. Do you know what a harlot even is? Look it up sometime. Verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, he sa saith he, shall be one flesh? In other words, if you're joined to a harlot, you become one flesh with them. Now, again, we're talking slightly, spirit, or slightly fleshly here, but moreover, we're talking in the spiritual sense. In other words, if you join yourself to the harlot, Mystery Babylon, in other words, fall and worship the Antichrist, don't you know that you're going to become part of her? And you're going to be a partaker of her fornication and of her sins, and the cup of wrath is going to be poured out on you for that? You know, that's what is really being discussed here, let alone the fleshly aspect of it. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Gee, I wonder what spirit that could be talking about. Maybe the Holy Spirit? Verse 18. Flee fornication. In other words, get out of Babylon. Get away from that fornication. 
Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. We're talking about the many-membered body here. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Now we're talking a little more fleshly. And again, fornication, woman with woman, or man with man, or even man with woman. Verse 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Did you make your own soul? Did you breathe life into your body? Did you give yourself life? Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In other words, your body and your spirit, your soul, belong to God. And ye are bought with a price. What price? The price that... Christ paid on the cross with his blood shed. You know, brothers and sisters, and you too, Mr. and Mrs. America, these things that I've mentioned above before we got to Scripture, you're the ones allowing this. Now, I'm not talking to you who study with me, who are faithful to our Father, who abide by his word. And even though we all sin and fall short, we still have forgiveness through Christ. You know, that, that's why Christ is our intercessor. Because you're going to sin daily. Well, not in our church, brother. We aren't sinners. You're a sinner just for saying that, I hate to tell you. You know, if a gay or a lesbian is offended, he or she, uh, I should say it, because they aren't really sure, they're so confused of what role they want to play, but I won't. Anyway, they won't just turn the channel and watch something else. They won't go watch one of their little gay TV shows. No, they're going to be all offended. They will gripe and turn militant because a Christian stood up to their perversion and did it boldly. But if a Christian is offended by seeing two men kissing or two women leaking all over each other or a man and woman twerking on stage in front of people and their children watching with them in prime time, well, that's okay. That's just too bad, Mr. Christian or Mrs. Christian. You can just deal with it or change the channel because they don't want censorship. That is, unless it's of Christian values and normal family values and the way of God, in other words, the way God intended, then it's perfectly fine for it to be censored. I mean, need I say more about teaching of evolution and sex in schools? and creation not being taught, and the values of God not being taught, yet school is mandatory where church is optional. Turn over to Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1. I use this set of verses quite frequently. Like I said, you could go to the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, and read what God thinks about these perverse lifestyles. And, and it wasn't pretty, because a person in those times would be killed for it. That's right. They would be put to death for being gay or lesbian, or being caught in that act. They were called a sodomite. It's where the word sodomy comes from. You should be to Romans 1 by now, so we're going to begin at verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Paul again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, that is the good news of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation 
to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, that is to say the Israelite, also the Greek, which means the Gentile. I know it says Jew and Greek, but it means the Judaite, the Israelite, and the Gentile. It's used as Jew here because at the time, the Israelites had gone over the mountains, but they were still part of Israel. They're still the sons of uh, Jacob. They're still Yisrael. But what he has just said is here, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. That is unto your eternal life, to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, the Israelite first, and then to the Greek, the ethnic, the Gentile, the ethnos. Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Did it say they shall live by doing perverse acts? By twerking? By giving themselves pay raises in the middle of the night? By taking away rights and liberties? By writing little laws and presidential decrees and signing them into law? Which people don't understand and don't read? Which are building world government right up under their noses and they're too blind to see it? No, it says the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? In God. In the Christ that he sent to us. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all. Repeat all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, they call the word of God a lie. Or they get offended when someone says a verse from the Bible on TV and threaten to boycott and get out and wave their pretty little rainbow flags and protest with their little pink underwear on. Oh, Cyril, did you see what he said? My goodness me. We're going to have to call and complain. yoo -hoo! Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. And God hath showed it unto them. What are we talking about here? Well, what did the previous verse say? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness to men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may, may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. But did they want to see it? Nope. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Walk outside and look. Look at the blue sky, the beautiful green trees, waterfalls, mountains, fields of waving grain, wonderful pretty green and blue oceans. Sit down at your dinner table and smell the food. Taste the food. See the food. Listen to the cooking of the food. Enjoy your five senses which God gave you. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by these things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. But what does secular science and mankind say? Oh, there is no such thing as God. The world created itself. The Big Bang. The primordial ooze. The apes. Then the cavemen. 
Yeah, the cavemen and the missing links which have yet to be found and which will never be found because they never existed. So that they are without excuse. In other words, they got no excuse. God showed it to them. God revealed it. The only excuse they have nowadays is if they're in a church that is not teaching the truth and they believe, and God is understanding of that, which is why he gave us the millennium, the day of the Lord. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain, that is, empty in their imaginations. And their heart was, their foolish heart was darkened. You know what darkness is? That's the absence of light. In other words, their heart became deceived. Darkness is always symbolic of deception in the Bible, unless it's speaking of nighttime, and there's even a connotation there many times. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Hey, we know more than God. You better not punish your children. Dr. Spock says that that's bad for them, and so did Sigmund Freud. And you know Sigmund Freud and Dr. Spock are way wiser than God, right? Yeah. Look at what sex education has done. You know, the first time I mentioned sex education in a video, in one of these teachings, that one in four teenagers had a sexually transmitted disease, like herpes, gonorrhea, syphilis, or AIDS, or something like that. You know what the ver it is now? It's one in three. That sex education's doing marvelous things for us, isn't it? I wonder how all the people on planet Earth got born before sex education. I mean, you know, really. Nobody educated them as to how to have sex. Well, brother, you don't understand. We're telling them how to be safe when they're having sex. Oh, you're telling them how to be safe when they're fornicating. I mean, because you're teaching perverse lifestyles as normal. You're teaching that there's absolutely nothing wrong with a man uh, penetrating another man in the uh, port out of the body that was made to remove trash and filth from the human body, not made for sexual intercourse. Verse 22 again. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Oh, they'll call themselves wise. Hey, we know what we're talking about, buddy. We're not fools. Gee, I wonder why all the stuff that we're teaching is causing things to be worse. Ah, must be coincidence. Verse 23. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God and into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. In other words, things of the earth, fleshly things. They changed the glory of God into corruptness. Changed it into the fleshly. God wants gay marriage. How many times have you seen gay parades where they hold up signs that says, God is for gay marriage. Love is universal. To hell it is. Love for your brother doesn't mean to French kiss him, buddy. Or to have him play, pa play patty cake with your hind side. Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts. In other words, God said, okay, go ahead, enjoy yourself, knock yourself out. But when it comes back to bite you, don't come crying to me. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Gee, I wonder how they do that. Well, let's see. You take two males and put them in the bed, and there doesn't seem to really be 
a place for them to connect properly. Oh, wait a minute, there's one. Gee, is that what that's for? I don't think so. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Changed the truth of God into, in other words, they changed God's nature into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature. Do you know what creature is? That means creature, the thing God created more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. In other words, they worship the flesh and the fleshly wants and desires more than they worship the God who created the flesh. Verse 26. For this cause God gave them over to vile, that is, perverse affections. For even their women did change the natural use to that which is against nature. You know what that means? It means women with women. I don't think I'll say any more on that. I've already crossed over the line a few times for the Christian ear. And uh, I don't mean to offend anyone, but... I don't mince words. Verse 27. And likewise also the men. I mean, just like the women. Likewise also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman. In other words, that which God intended. Burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men. Working that which is unseemly. And receiving in themselves the recompense for their error which was meet. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean God's punishment upon them. It means they practice filth, and since they practice filth, they got disease from practicing the filth. Cause and effect, my friend. In other words, if you stick your male organ into the um, filthy chute which removes filth from the body, then guess what? You're exposing yourself to all kinds of nasty little things and little matter. You know, that's why we flush that stuff away in the toilet and don't keep it as souvenirs because it's filth. And you're wanting to penetrate into that and expose yourself to it? And then you wonder why you get diseases like AIDS or herpes, or gonorrhea, or, or any number of other sexually transmitted diseases. There's probably going to be a few new ones named. That's the recompense they received for their error, which was meat. In other words, which they earned, which they deserved, which was good enough for them. It doesn't make God happy. But hey, you walk out in front of a uh, truck that's doing 90 miles an hour, and it slams you to the ground and kills you, well, you received that which was meat because you were stupid enough to walk out in front of a truck. And I don't mean those people who don't know what they're doing because we're talking about people who know very well what they're doing. But they don't care about God. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, in other words, they don't want to know God's word, they don't want to know about God, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. What things? The things we've been talking about all along. In other words, God gave them over to their fleshly will to do those things which they want to. But they're going to suffer the consequences for it. <clears throat> oh yes, they want to forget God so they can fulfill their fleshly desires of perversion. And again, by the way, no Christian judges homosexuals or lesbians. It was God who judged them, who said that the lifestyle is an abomination and perverse. Which means filth. But they don't care what God thinks, right now anyway in their self-righteous mortal flesh bodies, 
which are raised up in pride against God. But you can bet when they are standing naked before his throne, they won't be so uppity. They won't be so militant then. In fact, they will be uh, urinating on themselves for fear. And again, I speak metaphorically. In other words, they won't be so mouthy and so proud of what they did in that day, I guarantee you. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. That means gossipers, verse 30, backbiters, haters of God. Well, I am not going to worship any God that won't let me get married to another man. I'm sorry. That's just wrong. Love is universal. Despiteful. Oh, boy. Militant. There you go. Proud. Boasters. Inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents. Like I said, don't you just know that Miley Cyrus and Madonna and Britney Spears and all the others who do what they do, but don't you know their parents are just so proud of what their little angel has done? Verse 31. Without understanding. It means they don't understand the word of God. They didn't want to retain it in their memory, remember? They didn't want to know about it. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. In other words, natural the way in God tended. Implacable. Unmerciful. Oh, no, we're not going to show any mercy to the guy who besmirched homosexuals. We're going to put him in the focus. We're going to teach him a lesson for daring to speak some verses of that, that book on TV. Oh, you mean the word of God? Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God... They which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in doing them. You know, there is seldom a person in this world now, except maybe a few in this generation who have never been taught, who do not know that God is against this. But some, rather than turning to God, would rather turn to the flesh and live that lifestyle and say to hell with you, God, if you're going to keep me from doing what I want to do. And they have pleasure in doing them. Hey, read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and see how it fits with today as far as the blessings when men please God versus the curses when men turn their backs on him. And read in the New Testament in the Beatitudes and the cursings of Christ. In other words, where he got up and said, blessed are you when? And cursed are you when? You see, while all of these stars and all of these gays and lesbians are showing their proverbial behinds on TV and at protests and, you know, doing whatever they want to, and in the movies, they're not paying attention to God. And likewise, those who support them and watch their filth and sit still and say nothing for fear of being labeled it, and that includes Christians. Christians who make up 82% of this country. And 76% of Christians, of that 82%, do not believe in gay marriage. Yet, how is it that gay marriage is being passed? You tell me. Christians have the majority, but they're called the silent majority. You know why? Because they're silent. Well, we're scared to speak out, brother. We'll be judged. Or someone will accuse us of judging, or they'll say we're full of hate. Oh, poor baby. It's a good thing Christ didn't do that, or Peter or Paul. I mean, we never would have heard the word then. Paul would have just climbed up under a bed somewhere and said, I'm not going to teach this word of Christ because somebody's going to, dare I say it, call me a judge 
or say that I'm a hater or say that I'm racist. So I'm just going to hide under this bed. And then there never would have been the word of God, which would have pleased the world today to no end. Yet Paul did stand up strong, and Christians of old stood up strong. And they faced the Colosseums of Rome, being burned alive, being killed by gladiators, being eaten by lions. But what does today's Christian do? <laughs> they look the other way. They sit down and watch American Idol. They sit down and watch X Factor. They sit down and watch Monday Night Football. They watch Dancing with the Stars. Can they be bothered to do anything? Can they be bothered to march on Washington? No, that's too far away, brother. Can't do it. Can they be bothered to write their congressman and senator? And I know some of you do. And praise God for those of you who do. But in a nation with as many people of faith, even Muslims and even Jews, who know that this lifestyle is perverse, which are added on to that percentile that I gave you earlier, they say nothing. Well, we don't want to be persecutors. Well, then go hide in your little synagogue or in your little mosque and let the Christians hide in their little churches and let them teach your children that they evolved from apes and pass them out condoms and show them what sex is so that by the age of 12, they're already practicing it. And catching diseases. And be proud of yourself, Mr. and Mrs. America. Be proud that you didn't make a stand for your God. I'm sure he'll be proud of you when you make it to heaven. You know, praise be that our Father is merciful and he's made provision for these pathetic, misled fools who practice these lifestyles and push perversion like a bulldozer pushing up mountains of sand. The day of the Lord, the millennium, is coming. And in that day, when Jesus and his elect, that is to say, his apostles, his saints, and the election, are going to teach these wretches truth and discipline with love and compassion and with the rod of correction. So that they might, perchance, attain to eternal life, since they failed to do so here in the flesh. Well, are you judging, brother? No, I'm not judging. God judges. Oh, and by the way, let me say Merry Christmas to anyone listening. You will notice I did not say Happy Holidays, nor Season's Greetings, nor Merry Xmas, because I am not afraid nor embarrassed to speak the name of Christ. You see, I'm not politically correct, and I don't give a damn who likes it and who does not. If people like Miley Cyrus and Madonna and a host of others, perverse little minions, can offend and do what they want and tell Christians or people of morality to deal with it, then, hey, so can I. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Because Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. Not iPads, not twerking, not gay marriage or gay or lesbian lifestyles or bisexuality. Not fat politicians who are ruining the country on purpose. But Jesus is the reason for the season. So Merry Christmas. And speaking of these politicians, let me, let me take a moment here. These lard but big-talking, do-nothing politicians will spend money on all kinds of pork barrel pursuits. They won't, us to allow, they won't allow us to 
farm our own lands, grow our own crops, dig for our own oil, or get our own um, coal. In other words, they're phasing it out. They will give NASA billions of dollars to shoot rockets into space to go to Mars to try and find signs of life. In other words, attempting to find life or where life has been at some point, which they never will find. And these politicians give these billions for these port barrel projects while they allow people on the planet Earth to starve to death for want of a bowl of rice or for a vaccination. People in Africa and third world countries starving to death when we have the money and the ability to feed and clothe them. But they're just fellow human beings, so what? We need to send rockets and rovers up to planet Mars to look at dirt and rocks and patches of ice. Because that's more important than feeding people and keeping them alive. I mean, they're only God's children. And you know what else they do? <coughs> Your lard-ass politicians? They see to it and write little laws that if you're over a certain age, in other words, if you're over the age of 76, you will not be treated for cancer or any disease which you might, if you were treated, be healed from. Why? Because you're old. You're of no use anymore. You're not young. You're not going to be part of the workforce. You're not going to be paying taxes. You're going to be a burden and a drain on society. So they're going to get rid of you. Remember the death squads that Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity warned us about? Now they don't need death squads. It's written into the Obamacare law. Go read it sometime. Well, I don't know how to read legalese. Well, then suffer, okay? Wait till you turn that age. You see, the young are viable. They will earn money, which can be taxed. But you old people, all you are is a burden on society. So they're going to get rid of you. If you catch cancer, they're not going to treat you. Or you're going to pay for it yourself. And who can afford that? Oh, but that's what we've got Obamacare for, brother. Yeah, except that it's written into Obamacare that you're not going to be treated. Wake up, idiots! You think half of this world is on crack or, or, or staying stoned to the point that they can't uh, think. You know, I'm beginning to wonder about this fluoridation in the water thing. But even so, don't worry. Judgment is coming to these politicians and to their ample fat rumps. And it ain't going to be pretty. And these politicians are doing all this on your dollar, Mr. and Mrs. America. Mr. and Mr. Or, or excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Christian. That's right, you 82%, you 76%. And all you Jews and Muslims out there and all you other people that came from other countries to America to earn a living, it's on your buck, on your back-breaking work that the politicians are doing this. What are you doing about it? Well, we're going to vote more of them into office because they promise us things like welfare and WIC and SNAP and free cell phones and free gas and an Obama phone. Got my Obama phone. and low-income housing, and social security for immigrants. Excuse me, did I say immigrants? I meant illegal immigrants. And then they're going to go home on their 
quote unquote holiday break. <coughs> Good grief, I don't want to say Christmas and offend them. And they're going to eat their ham and their turkey and fill their big fat guts and enjoy their mansions and their warm swimming pools and their golf courses and their tennis courts and their weekend, or I should say months in getaways to the Harvard Club or to the Boat Club. And they're going to take their big salaries for the rest of their lives, never perceiving that God is watching and keeping score. And that when they meet him face to face, they will answer for their actions. Likewise, all of these who I've mentioned concerning gay marriage, lesbianism, the Miley Cyrus Madonna type, the Hollywood bigwigs. And I know that all I have said here is a bunch of hate speech. Well, you call it whatever you want to, brother. You call it whatever you want to. But when you get to heaven, you remember that somebody told you. Somebody spoke it. Somebody dared to be a Daniel and stood up and told you. And didn't hide in the little closet or under the bed. Didn't hide his candle under a bushel. Didn't cover his candle with a bucket so that the light couldn't be seen. You've been warned. At any rate, that's where we're going to end this particular rant, commentary, and study. I could say a lot more, but there's no need. I've let off the amount of steam that I need to. Again, let me say Merry Christmas to all of you. And may God bless you with wisdom and knowledge, those of you who care about him and do want to retain him in your knowledge and do seek his face in counsel and do study his word and break back the words to the Hebrew and the Greek. And first and foremost, pray to our Father and ask for forgiveness and ask for enlightenment. May God bless you and may you have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening. This has been Just Thoughts.